So let's start with the uh, current WHO recommendations for first line. I have to say that uh, we had a, a meeting a couple of weeks ago, and you, you will see a new version in July the, during the Mexico conference with no major changes, but some, some precisions in terms of the strengths of the recommendations and some, some new stuff, uh, particularly in, in regards to pregnant women. But basically, the recommendation for first line is the TLD. You know, TLD stays for tenofovir, lamivudine, and dolutegravir. And as an alternative, uh, tenofovir, lamivudine, and efavirenz, TLE, uh, either with 600 milligrams or 400 milligrams, with more evidence accumulating in favor of 400 milligrams. And uh, as you know, the WHO tries to uh, synthesize the recommendation, making, making it um, as much as possible for uh, men and women, even pregnant women, and for, uh, for children, as much as uh, the, the children have uh, the appropriate uh, pharmacologic formulations. So, first of all, uh, one, one of the strategies that the, the WHO was studying is the dose, dose reduction. You are very well aware about the ENCORE 1 study in which a Fabrians 400 milligram was not inferior to the approved 600 milligram dose in antiretroviral naive adults. And uh, that means uh, less API, let's, uh, API st stays for acute pharmaceutical ingredient, and it, it should lower the cost for the programs. Uh, data on regards of pregnancy and, and uh, anti-B treatment, particularly with refumping, uh, are not so clear. But for patients other than, than uh, pregnant women or uh, patients co-infected with TB, it works. In terms of safety, as you may expect, it's not, it's not worse and it's even, even better. Uh, not, uh, not reaching a statistically significance, but um, it's, uh, it's better tolerated in general uh, when you compare it with a, <clears throat> with a 600 milligram version. Uh, but the evidence is facing out from many guidelines, and there, is, there, there are good reasons for that. Raltegravir has shown superiority uh, after four or five years. Dolotegravir has shown superiority at 48 weeks. Even Rilpivirin has, has shown to be superior, provided that the patient has a baseline viral load lower than 100,000 copies. And as you know, uh, there is a, a quite important side effect over the CNS. And an ACTG meta-analysis of four studies showed that twofold increase in the risk of suicidality, which states for uh, effective suicide, uh, attempts of suicide, or even thinking about suicide. So it's a kind of little bit gray uh, area, but um, it's important to to take this in account. And more important, even is is this part of the of the graph? Is, does it show? Yes, in which you you see in different parts of the of the world. Asia looks uh, eventually better than, than other regions like mine. In, in my region, uh, resistance to effavirenz <clears throat> in naive population is, is about 10 to 15 percent. And uh, with this level, effavirenz can no longer be considered a first-line drug. If uh, the, the data that were published in 2017 for Asia are still are still uh, reliable, then you, you might consider uh, uh, continue using a favorence in this regard. But uh, uh, you, you need to have a surveillance on, on, uh, in, in regards to a favorence resistance. <clears throat> Let's, uh, let me show you some of the new options that you might consider when you write your, your guidance. We have a new non-nucleoside, Doravidin. <coughs> Sorry, Doravinin is a second generation non-nucleoside non that is better tolerated than efavirenz, has a different resistant profile, and uh, the efficacy uh, has, has shown to be similar as, it, as I will show you in a minute. Uh, first study, the drive ahead study, randomized patients either to the triple combination of efavirenz, tenofovir, and FTC in a double blind placebo controlled trial and compare it to Doravirin 100 milligrams together with tenofovir 3TC. And the other study was comparing Doravirin 100 milligrams plus two nukes uh, versus Darunavir-Ritonavir 800-100 uh, 
plus two nukes. And again, a double blind placebo controlled trial. And if you look at this graph here, you will see uh, the, the pooled results of, of the, two, the two trials that I showed you. And you can see here that the, the results are around 80%, 81, 84, depending on the, on the line you look at. But there was, there was no difference in terms of uh, non-inferiority was achieved for both comparisons of Doravirin with Efavirenz and with Darunavir Ritonavir. Regarding safety, uh, Doravirin was uh, better tolerated than Efavirenz uh, and uh, with the similar tolerability to Darunavir Ritonavir. The rate of discontinuations due to a drug-related adverse event here was lower for Doravirin when uh, numerically lower for Doravirin when compared with the Ruravir Ritonavir and, and particularly with, with Efavirenz. And in terms of lipids, uh, it's uh, lipid neutral at least when you compare it with uh, the runavir ritonavir and, and efavirenz, be it LDL cholesterol, be it, be, be it total cholesterol or, or triglycerides. And as you can see, uh, there's uh, no decline in, in HDL cholesterol in uh, any of the three drugs that we are comparing here. Regarding resistance, as you can see, I would like to draw your, your attention to the K103N and the uh, Y181C. Uh, mutations that are very frequently uh, in, seen, at least in my region, and they are selected by Efavirenz and, and Nevirapim, respectively. And uh, even the G190A doesn't affect that much Doravirin, but you see that, that the Y188L uh, does affect Doravirin. And, and you can see in the comparison with other non-nucleosides, Efavirin, Etravirin, or Rilpivirin, that the resistant profile is, is, is advantageous for this drug. What, what happens with PIs? Well, we, PIs are very well known the, in terms of the, 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 the advantages, high potency, high genetic barrier, and durability. Nevertheless, they are phasing out from uh, almost all guidelines. In some guidelines, they, they don't exist anymore as a first-line uh, uh, preferred approach. They, they, they do as uh, alternative. Uh, in some guidelines, they, they still are there, but only if uh, this is the case for Darunavir. Reasons for, for that? Well, several drug-drug interactions, because as you know, the PIs need to be boosted, either with Ritonavir or Covisistat. Uh, they are not to be used with Refampin in, in particular. There are tolerability issues, side, side effects, metabolic side effects. Some signal not confirmed about uh, cardiovascular risk uh, could be higher with Darunavir. And the, the PIs have been associated with preterm delivery and low uh, gestational weight. Nevertheless, we have a new PI on board. We have now a, a fixed dose combination for the first time. If you, are, if you are a fan of PIs, you have an option to use this one. It's a single pill with, uh, containing TAF, FTC, uh, Covisistat, and Darunavir. And as you can see here, in the comparison with the separate components or the single tablet, uh, there's, there's no, no major difference. And uh, it lasts until uh, week 96 uh, with a nice uh, results uh, around 90%. And this is also true across diff different subgroups, people with more than 100,000 copies and uh, baseline CD4s uh, below 200. So it's really uh, an opportunity for somebody that w would like to, to start with uh, uh Integrase inhibitors are in first line in almost all drugs, including WHO. And as you know, we have four, uh, four uh, drugs in this group, raltegravir, elbeitegravir, dolutegravir, and bigtegravir. Raltegravir uh, can, be, can be prescribed now once a day because they, there is a, the new formulation, 600 milligrams, that you can use two pills. Uh, together with uh, uh, a pair of nucleosides, usually tenofovir XTC, meaning 3DC or, 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 or FTC, but uh, there's no single tablet regimen for it. Elvitegravir, I think, is phasing out because of the use of Covisistat, which has all the complications in terms of drug drug interactions. Eventually, some, some of them are, are different when you compare Covisistat with Ritonavir. Dolutegravir is a, is a very well-known drug and it's the preferred one in WHO guidelines. And it's also part in the, of the European guidelines, the US guidelines in many countries. It has been shown to be non-inferior to Raltegravir, but to be superior to uh, Efavirenz, superior to Darunavir-Ritonavir, and superior, superior to Atasanavir-Ritonavir in women. 
And uh, finally, the, 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 the last player that, uh, that we have in this field is Big Tegravir. is uh, is a part of a fixed dose combination with TAF FTC and has been shown in two studies to be non-inferior to Dolutegravir. Uh, Big Tegravir has not been compared with the Fabrians or with uh, boosted PIs. So in, the, in this study, you can see the non-inferiority shown between Big Tegravir and Dolutegravir. The confidence interval crosses zero. Uh, tolerability uh, of the big tegravir and the is very similar. The difference found in the GS4089 study, in which the uh, lutegravir was not combined with AFTC TAF but was combined with 3TC Avacavir, was better in the big tegravir arm, but this, this was due to the presence of Avacavir in that, in that particular trial. Here, in, in which the lutegravir and big tegravir both are uh, associated with. Uh, with, I, 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 I'm showing, I'm showing the, the, the 1490, I'm sorry. In the 1489, in which uh, uh, the patients used um, TAF FTC in both, in both uh, arms, there, there was no difference in terms of tolerability. But the virological outcome was very similar in the 1489 and the 1490. This morning at the virology education meeting, I was extensively talking about um, Gemini 1 and 2. Uh, as you know, this is a dual therapy strategy in which the basic idea of the, the study design was to uh, explore if you can use less uh, medications, less drugs, and have the same results. And it seems to, to, to be the case, uh, as we showed in the 48 weeks results, uh, the, the results are, are around the 90s, as, as you can see, 90%. <clears throat> Again, non-inferiority was shown. And next month in Mexico, we will present the 96 weeks data. <clears throat> so there are some concerns and research gap regarding integrase inhibitors. One is the, the, the use of integrase inhibitors in TB patients. Safety in pregnant women and children, that I think it will be addressed in other session in this conference. So I'm not uh, expanding the, the information. So far, what I can tell you is that the, there is a, a strong signal coming from Botswana, from the Cepamo study. Initially, it was nine times as higher uh, when, when compared with the, with the uh, overall population, with the general population. In terms of neural tube defects, it went down to 0.6, and new data will be presented in Mexico showing probably a decrease in this, in this number, but still there is a question mark in terms of using it in women that are in reproductive age and don't use uh, effective contraception. Uh, what what do will happen with resistance in real life? Because so far we have seen particularly with Bictegravir and Dolutegravir, that there is no emergence of resistance in, in naive patients, but will this translate in real life when millions of, of people are treated with, with, with this drug? We need to watch on it. Uh, side effects, particularly a, a, recent, a recently seen weight gain issue. Uh, the, 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 there was a question mark regarding iris, which I think is, is over, because we have three studies that have shown that uh, even if uh, all the integrase inhibitors drop down very quickly the uh, viral load. There's no uh, higher incidence of uh, iris in, in this type of patients. Regarding weight gain, there's, we need to be very careful by, inter by interpreting this, this information. What are we talking about? Are we talking return to health? I mean, I'm HIV positive, I'm, st I'm starting my, my medicines, I feel better, I, I eat more, I gain weight. That's not bad. Are we talking about obesity? Are we talking about the BMI over 30? Are we talking about an effect that you can even, even, even confirm using the DEXA scan? So we need to look at it. It seems that something is happening when you compare in the, in the, in the left side of, of the slide, uh, integrase inhibitors with PI and with the nucleoside. It seems that uh, uh, integrase inhibitor based treatment gives you more, more weight gain. Uh, if, we, if you look based on this data and this uh, modeling, uh, it seems that dolutegravir does it mm, higher in, uh, when compared with raltegravir or with uh, elvitegravir. Uh, but uh, in the same conference in Croix 2019, uh, another study showed that elvitegravir gave you more weight than, than dolutegravir. So we need to be careful again and, and wait for more uh, data. Regarding drug interactions, uh, it's a very, a very nice class. Uh, raltegravir is the cleanest one because it's only metabolized via the UG, uh, uh, UGT1 and A1. Uh, 
the lutegravir is 75% percent um, um, metabolized uh, in the same way, about 25% percent depends on the CYP 453A. And for vitegravir, it's a little bit higher, it's 50-50% percent approximately. So uh, there are some interactions you have to take in account. If you use metformin, you need to reduce the, uh, the, the dose. And uh, with rifampin, uh, unfortunately, vitegravir cannot be used. Dolutegravir can be used, but you need to duplicate the dose. You need to use 50 milligrams twice a day, so it would not be any longer a once daily drug uh, as, as long as you are taking rifampin. Uh, we have two studies that show that you can use either raltegravir in the left side or dolutegravir in the, in the right side of the, of, of the slide. Uh, Beatrice Greenstein from Brazil st studied the, 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 the Reflate trial in which uh, she compared the usual dose of 400 milligram twice a day uh, versus 800 milligram twice a day and she, she didn't see any major difference. In, in our setting we use Rategravir 400 milligram twice a day, so the regular dose and we, we didn't see any, any bad effect on, on that regard. Please note that, that if you are going to use the, the new formulation of raltegravir, 600 milligram once a day, it has not been studied with rifampin, so you should avoid the, this type of, of use. On the other hand, dolutegravir has been tested in this, in this sparring study compared with, with the favirens, and as you can see, the results are uh, around 75%, which is not a, a, an excellent performance, I have to say, when you compare it with other studies of dolutegravir. But uh, still, you can use it. Resistance, as I, as I told you, nothing happens in, in regards to dolotegravir and vitegravir in naive patients, but you, you get uh, about a 2% uh, cases of resistance selected in patients failing to failing first-line therapy, both for lotegravir and for l -vitegravir. Regarding the tolerability, as you can see here, you have the comparisons with PIs and with the nucleosides, and uh, in all cases, uh, integrase inhibitors, even even the, the boosted ones, are better tolerated than uh, the, 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 the comparator, uh, basically a favorence or boosted PIs. Uh, talking about uh, new strategies in, in terms of, of therapy, you might consider this uh, combina fixed dose combination that has been has been launched in at least in the U.S. and I think probably also in Europe, uh, which is uh, dolutegravir plus rilpivirin. In patients that are detectable, never had f uh, previous failure, no resistance, uh, no resistance at, uh, at baseline, and the results were absolutely uh, similar when you when you compare the arm that was switched to the lutegravir pivoting in blue, compared to the uh, continuing baseline art in in orange. And uh, just a word about the uh, strategy that is coming and you might consider for particular patients that is injectable, uh, intramuscular injectable <coughs> uh, combination of two drugs, long-acting cabotegravir and long-acting rilpivirin has been studied in, in two different settings. One is a switch setting like, like the ATLAS study and the other one is in, uh, in patients that are naive to antiretroviral therapy <clears throat> after induction with avacavir 3 tc and dolutegravir for, for 20 weeks. And in, in a nutshell, the, the result is that less than 2% of the patients failed to uh, maintain virological suppression uh, at week 48. Tolerability was, was very good. A few patients really stopped uh, because of inject injection side reactions. And... Um, and uh, really, the, uh, it looks like a, a, an option that you may consider basically in two different situations in my point of view. One would be this, this type of typical patient that you, I am sure you have in your clinic. The middle class uh, MSM comes to your clinic. You ask him, have you taken your medicine? Oh, doctor, don't be mad on me. Last Wednesday, instead of taking it at 9 o'clock, I did it at 10 o'clock, but I promise it will never happen again. <laughs> Okay, this patient, you, 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 you might be sure that he will show, show up next month or every other month to, 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 to get the, the injections. On the other edge, patients with a chaotic lifestyle that are not able to take care of themselves, but they have a significant other, uh, mother or, or fiancé or whatever it is, and that can, can be the, the, the kind of the navigator that brings back the patients every month to get the, the injections. 
So this is very important to, to, to consider in this particular situation. I think one size does not fit all, so it, it wouldn't be the, the solution for uh, every single patient. The pipeline is, is still active, coming to the end of the, of the talk. It, this is just to, to show you what has been approved uh, lately, uh, going from left to right. <clears throat> The uh, combination of, uh, of Darunavir with TAF FTC and, and Covisistat, a fixed, a fixed dose combination for developing countries of Tenofovir 3 tc and Dolutegravir, the combination of Dolutegravir and Relpivirin, uh, Ibalizumab, uh, which is a uh, monoclonal antibody, uh, the combina triple combination of TAF FTC and uh, Bictegravir, and, and Doravirin, the non nucleoside that I showed you, in fixed dose combination with tenofovir and lamivudine, and lately Dobato, which is the combination of uh, dolutegravir and 3DC. <clears throat> so um, I would like also to, to uh, drive your attention to a compound that is being developed uh, as we speak, MK8591. It's a very potent uh, 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 nucleoside uh, reverse transcriptase inhibitor, which is also a translation, translation inhibitor. And look, look at the doses we are, we are talking about, from 0.25 milligrams to 5 milligrams, very long half-life that uh, is available to, to use it once a week. And, uh, and Merck is working uh, with this compound in order to, to, to develop a formulation that could be uh, inserted in, a, in this type of device, subcutaneous device, to, to be changed every six months. Mm. The devices that, that the industry is developing now are even erodible, so it might happen that you see your patients twice a, twice a, a year, and you, you don't need to take out the, the, uh, the, the device, you, are, you just need to put uh, another, uh, another one, which is uh, certainly an advantage uh, over the cabotegravir repairing strategy, because now we are seeing our patients every six months. I assume that's almost the same in this region. If you go to the cabotegravir repairing strategy, you need to see your patients every month. So this is, has some logistical implications. And uh, another drug, <clears throat> which is also in the chapter of long-acting drugs, is this uh, compound from Gilead that uh, really has a very long half-life and uh, could be amenable for maybe quarterly applications of uh, this, this, this drug. And we, we need to see more data uh, in order to, to find the appropriate, the, 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 the appropriate bride for this, uh, this type of, of compound. Finally, uh, let me give you one, one word uh, uh, around broadly neutralizing monoclonal antibodies. As you know, not every, every individual responds to HIV infection in the same way. We have individuals, uh, a few of them, that produce an antibodies that are, are able to neutralize more than 80% of the different uh, virus strains. They are called elite ne neutralizers. Based on that, they are developing now Several, several type of, uh, <clears throat> of uh, BNAPs, as, as, as they call it, and I showed you, uh, I drive your attention to this monkeys here. This monkeys, uh, in, in the, this one did, did not receive uh, the uh, monoclonal antibody, and by day 14, as you can see, after having challenged with SIV, the simian immunodeficiency virus, you can, you can see the, the seeding of the virus in different parts of, of the body. Look at, the, at this one, in which they, they, they received preemptive therapy with the monoclonal antibodies and the seeding didn't happen. We are, some of us are very similar to monkeys, but we are, we, we are not monkeys. We need to see if this works appropriately in, in human beings, but it's, it's very in, encouraging. So in conclusion, the effectiveness of, of antiretroviral <coughs> therapy is already very high. The guidelines lean towards integrase inhibitors, but other classes of new combinations. It's true that our patients request for simpler treatments, so that's the reason why the industry is moving towards monthly or weekly or every three months or even uh, every six months treatments. There's different strategies in, strategies in development. The two-drug strategy is, is now part of, a, of the guidelines as an alternative option, and I think it will gain more space. And there are other strategies uh, uh, in progress, weekend breaks, dose reduction, long-acting drugs, weekly oral doses, etc. But as, as I say here this, in this cartoon, don't try this at home so far. We need more evidence before we start with that. And I think 
I'm done. Thank you very much for your attention.